Good afternoon, everyone. Carisoft Technology would like to welcome you to our ServiceNow Federal Tech Talk, Transform Government Customer Experience Through Public Sector Digital Services. Joining us today from ServiceNow, we have Brittany Thorburn, Senior Inside Sa Solution Sales Manager, and Jimmy McDaniel, Senior Advisory Solution Ar Architect. At this time, I'd like to hand the floor over to our speakers. Brittany and Jimmy, the floor is all yours. Thank you, Heather. Heather. Um, good afternoon, everyone. Welcome to our ServiceNow Federal Tech Talk focused on transforming government customer experience. Today, we'll cover topics ranging from why cu customer experience matters to how solutions like our ServiceNow public sector digital services can be applied to your agency and your mission. Uh, before we begin, as Heather mentioned, please submit all your questions through the Q&A section of the webinar, and we'll address them at certain points throughout today's presentation. We're super excited to discuss today's topic, so let's go ahead and jump in. Today you'll hear from myself as well as my colleague Jimmy McDaniel as your speakers. My name is Brittany Thorburn. I'm a Solutions Sales Executive for our Government Workflows Division, supporting agencies across the federal government solve mission-related and customer experience challenges. Uh, Jimmy, I'll pass it over to you for an introduction. Uh, thank you, Brittany. Hello, everyone. I am Jimmy McDaniel. I'm a solution architect, and I work directly with Brittany to support our government customers. I help them understand how our government platform can support their current and future mission objectives. Awesome. Thanks, Jimmy. And now before we jump into the actual presentation, we do have a safe harbor notice to share. As our platform evolves multiple times throughout the year, we may mention some statements that are forward looking and we're um, required to provide that notice. So for today's agenda, we plan to walk through four main categories, why government customer experience matters, how you can accelerate your mission to serve through public sector digital services, a solutions demonstration of the product in action, and an overview of where our solutions can fit within your agency today, highlighting a few real life use cases. And lastly, we'll wrap up with any further questions and uh, next steps. All right, so let's begin. As you are all aware, there are several challenges government agencies face today when it comes to customer experience. But even though there are challenges, creating that modern customer experience is becoming more and more important as a strategic priority. Governments around the world are adapting quickly during the COVID-19 pandemic and still to this day. There was an increase in demand for public services along with the need to support an increasingly remote workforce all done digitally. Forrester has predicted that 2023 will be a year of struggle for government as they balance, balance between preparing for future crises as well as transitioning back to businesses as usual. So governments who don't embrace digital technology for this service delivery will continue to face challenges because expectations are rapidly evolving for both customer and employee experiences. Historically, government transformation has lagged behind the private sector. But by prioritizing modernization of their systems, government can exceed the needs of their stakeholders while creating a positive employee experience. Today, internal resource constraints sometimes complement the or complicate the ability for government to deliver services efficiently. In order to improve, governments are looking at trends and identifying how best to address them. 72% of digital government programs accelerated in response to pandemic demands, but most government services are still being optimized today through existing services and programs. From a study on top trends in government, the U.S. federal government employees engagement rate as, is at 69%. At first glance, that seems pretty high, but then you remember that almost a third of their workforce isn't engaged. And the recurrent reality is that government systems often create complicated customer experience. Inside the government, processing a service request often spans multiple departments and agencies. Agency A may receive the request, but Agency B may need to step in or be aware of it. Historically, government was siloed by design, but now agencies have become more interconnected and those barriers hinder their ability to work efficiently. In conversation with government leaders, we usually find that they focus on their digital transformation efforts on the front end layer, making it easier for their stakeholders to interact and submit requests. 
but the process can break down behind the scenes when work disperse, disperses across teams. While the front end usability is important, it's not enough to build trust if the services aren't being delivered in a timely manner. In this back end, or what we call the messy middle, we find that governments still rely on Excel files, emails, and paper processes across siloed systems. Or they may be using spreadsheets to manage things that spreadsheets were never intended for. This makes employees who are trying to deliver services less productive, and a customer request could take days, uh, perhaps weeks, to get resolved. So managing these dis disconnected technologies is why ServiceNow created our unique platform architecture 18 years ago. And we have since then built specific native extensions to our platform that apply, a common, apply to common government environments such as customer service. So how can the government digitalize and unify their employees, technology, and services? With ServiceNow, government can intelligently orchestrate and automate work end-to-end -end across their organization. We help create new ways for customers to interact with government that didn't previously exist or we can streamline processes that they are that are they're already being used today. We can automate and route work into discrete tasks, connecting the con taking the contract construct of a process, applying workflow and process automation and removing those manual tedious steps so that employees can focus on their highest value of work to better serve their mission. This modernization allows important services to go from days to weeks to hours to days resulting in an improved government satisfaction and faster delivery of their mission. We not only can help with new processes, but we can rapidly revamp and integrate with existing environments and systems to act as that single layer of action. We connect everything, your employees, your departments, your systems, and silos. This is done through our unique architecture and data model, our ability to allow work to be run in parallel, and our low-code configuration to create and extend services. This modern way of work improves efficiencies and reduced costs, and that money can be reinvested into your programs and your employees to create new services and experiences that weren't possible before because of the constraints on your siloed systems. So despite shrinking budgets, government agencies must address to this growing demand for modern fast service. With ServiceNow's architecture, governments can rest assured that they're maximizing the employee efficiencies while reducing operational costs. So that begs the question, accelerate customer service or stay on budget? We allow our customers to say yes. So let's dive into how ServiceNow streamlines government processes from the power of our core platform to using our purpose-built government solution, public sector digital services. Starting with the ServiceNow platform, which some of you may be familiar with, all of our solutions are built from the same single cloud platform with a single data model and a single architecture. Our base architecture can best be described in three functional areas, platform foundation, configuration and extensibility, and intelligence and optimization. Our platform's foundation extends to include government customer experience components to improve how your employees and stakeholders engage with government. So ServiceNow is investing in government-specific solutions to bring in that next wave of innovation, all while, all while coexisting with legacy investments. We continually invest in industry-specific solutions across our platform, and public sector digital services contains key capabilities to help you do so including our core government CX components, where you can take advantage of powerful, powerful workflow engines, task and assignments, a government service portal, and a government extendable case type, allowing you to create multiple services and transparent repeatable processes without needing to rebuild every time. And our public sector digital service data model provides a framework that enables your government to create flexible data structures that meet their operational needs. So whether that's modeling a service from an agency to a constituent or an agency to an agency or an agency to a business. And lastly, we have pre-built government applications and playbooks that allow you to instantly stand up common services like information requests, licensing, or grants, and bring your government-built solution to life. So when building these services or extending off of some of our pre-built ones, Governments can stand up these new services faster with time to value of 12 weeks or less in some cases. And because of your government 
because your government workflows will inherit the platform and these out-of-the-box capabilities, it'll be easier to extend and deploy. So when it comes down to the value of public sector digital services, it really boils down to three main points. Improving your customer and stakeholder experience, accelerating the delivery of services, and increasing your cross-functional team collaboration. We improve the stakeholder experience by offering a modern portal acting as that front door for all of your services. We allow stakeholders to utilize self-service rather than forms and being able to be you know, buried on a website. We help accelerate the delivery of services by allowing government to build their own service catalogs containing common requests and services. We can provide visual guidance of a process through things like playbooks, and we can trigger process execution automation to get work resolved efficiently. And lastly, we help increase that cross-functional cross orchestration by automatically assigning work and routing tasks between departments and providing visibility and communications end-to-end -end for all of the team members. So we hope you th keep these three areas in mind for processes of your own and ask yourself how you can improve the experience for not only your customers, but also your federal workforce. So I'll pause here for any questions or, or take a look at the chat. Um, I'm not sure if there's any immediate ones that have come in. Um, so far, I Brittany, can hand things uh, off to you, Jimmy. Yeah, so far the there's nothing in the Q&A, but we'll continue to monitor that. So let me awesome. go ahead and share my screen. Uh, hello, everyone. Again, I am Jimmy McDaniel. And so through the solution demonstration here, we are going to walk through a few key personas. So uh, that first one is going to be Julie Lewis. She is a senior direct director for Boxio Corporation. Um, she could easily be from another agency, though, or maybe she could be a citizen or a taxpayer or someone from a household. Uh, you know, as Brittany uh, mentioned earlier, uh, we support the different uh, quote unquote customers that, that um, you know, government agencies do support. She does interact, though, with the agency quite a bit. She does know what bad customer experience looks like. So she's really looking for a frictionless engagement um, and wants to self-serve as, as opposed to calling into an agency and you know potentially staying on hold for a really long time. That second persona right there in the middle is John Jason. He is the uh, agency analyst. Um, he does handle a wide variety of tasks for, for the agency. He does happen to be new in career and new to the agency. So while he does have a lot of responsibility, he doesn't necessarily know how to answer every question or, or handle every request as it comes in, but he's continuing to learn. And for him, you know, he needs to feel empowered to serve the mission, right? And to, uh, you know, do what he loves and what he's really good at. The one thing he probably won't tell, tell you is that that employee experience that, that he does experience is really important to him. Um, he's, he really doesn't want to have to manage, you know, a lot of ancillary processes outside of the main systems of record in multiple different um, spreadsheets. You know, he would like to have a consolidated view of everything that he has to get accomplished in a, on a daily basis without having to do a ton of swivel, swivel chair. And then lastly, we have Bernard Ludwig. He is the agency director. He's been there for 20 years. I, obviously, he looks very young. In our example, he started when he was right out of high school, we'll say. Um, he really wants to, wants to know how well he's delivering on the mission and how he can further improve against other metrics he is measured against. And he's really focused on and challenged with balancing that customer and employee experience with operational excellence and efficiency, you know, for which he's chartered with. So the key here really is driving outcomes while also continuing to drive those operational efficiencies. And so today I'm going to show you how public sector digital services, that platform for government does provide that foundation to help you support your mission. So let's jump into the demo. So as, uh, as I mentioned, we're going to start with Julie and she's that company representative. Um, she does interact with the agency a lot. She is very busy, though, as, as most people are. And it's important to her that her interactions with the agency are, are as frictionless as possible. So today is uh, no different. And she actually has another request 
for the agency. So the first thing that she does is head over to the agency support portal, which is leveraging our um, out of the box government, um, our government portal, which is branded um, for you know specific government needs. And, and she really hopes that she can resolve her issue quickly. Now, agencies also understand how difficult it is to navigate the seemingly endless and ever-changing list of rules and regulations. This is why organizations like Fish and Wildlife, Rec.gov, and the US Army really use the ServiceNow Service Portal framework to put everything at the stakeholders' fingertips, really allowing them to self-serve in, in, in an intuitive manner to which is gonna relieve a lot of pressure on those internal staff. So she quick she has quick access to a portfolio of services. We'll see that in a moment. You know, um, you know that the, that the agency does provide, you know, knowledge based articles and communities. So the the concept of employees potentially supporting employees or citizens supporting citizens. So she's just going to start in the middle. She's got questions around permitting. So she's going to type permit right here in the center. And what ServiceNow is doing as she types is searching across several out of the box and configurable sources to get her closer to what she needs. She does see an article though that could potentially provide some valuable information in order to solve her issue. So she browses to that. And you know, with this out of the box knowledge management capability, um, she's able to understand the article, get connected to other useful, potentially useful articles and uh, catalog items as well as she's able to provide feedback for you to uh, understand how well that content may be resonating with your stakeholder. So now that she's better informed, Julie is, uh, now browses that service catalog, which, is, which again is that portfolio of services that uh, the agency publishes to the public. So here we have a generic business service request, but other agencies have use cases around things like FOIA, complaints, licensing, and permitting, uh, just to name a few. Uh, and we'll see some more examples of some use cases a little later in the presentation. And so for today though, we're just gonna explore this uh, generic business service request. Now, we also know that even the simplest of processes requires a lot of data potentially, but Julie uh, really sees a concise form uh, really to collect only the necessary information to get the request started. And as Brittany mentioned earlier, public sector digital services out of the box support those complex relationships that, that, you, uh, that you service, such as um, agency to consumer or a business or all those, uh, those shared service situations like agency to agency, and then potentially those other, those supporting, supported agencies support those, those, um, con, you know, those constituents and businesses. And this is why we're able to understand um, the, you know, Julie's employer and their, and its subsidiaries, as well as other members of her employer. So she can make requests on others behalf based off of her, uh, rights as the, as the, um, organization lead. So she's going to make a request for herself here. Um, and this is, this is how we can actually keep that data separated. So she can't see contacts and employees from, you know, other businesses. So it's, a, it containerizes all of the, in her particular information. So she continues to fill out the form. She's going to look at all, all the service requests that are available to her. She's going to um, take a look at permits uh, that are available to her. And she sees the one, the special use permit that she's trying to apply for. Um, so she's going to type in a short description. Uh, all the required fields are then filled out. Uh, she can also attach any supporting documentation should she need to. Um, now, for those agencies that uh, use those fillable forms, you know, they're still kind of forms based. ServiceNow is actually able to um, to capture those forms, extract the meaningful parts of those documents uh, using document intelligence. So it's really going to effectively reduce that human error and really speed up that um, that time on task. Now, once she submits this uh, request, she'll now have an interface. Did I click submit? Yes, there we go. She now has an interface to stay connected, you know, to the to that uh, request throughout the entire lifecycle. So. This is going to reduce her uh, need to call in, uh, in or potentially email the agency for simple things like a status update. We also can keep her connected to, um, you know, the businesses that she supports, the contacts of those businesses, as well as any services that she's received through the through the agency. 
Now let's kind of let's wrap up for a second on Julie. So she was able to self-serve, really finding those answers pretty quickly. Um, she has a frictionless line of communication with uh, with the agency and the analysts that are supporting her her request. And she's got a single view of the services offered and received for her and her company or her employer. Okay, so we're gonna switch hats for just a minute and jump over to John Jason. Uh, remember, as we discussed earlier, John is that agency analyst. He's really on the front line of that constituent engagement, um, but he's still kind of new and uh, responsible for handling multiple different types of requests from constituents, businesses, and other agencies. So as you can imagine, context and automation and information are instrumental to his effectiveness, you know, on the in the, and that constituent experience. So John's going to start his day from his government workspace. And really from here, he can, has a complete picture of the work he has in front of him. So allowing him to focus on really on what's important. And the first thing that he sees is a personalized dashboards of metrics and KPIs that are meaningful to him and his team. And in the spirit of continuous improvement, leadership uh, like Bernard Ludwig, as he determines, you know, some new metrics or KPIs that are meaningful to the group, uh, he can he can certainly configure this landing page or this dashboard uh, using our no-code capabilities. So after completing the, his morning review, John places himself online. So uh, he marks himself available and to support uh, multiple different channels. The important point here is that um, John can support uh, many channels through a single interface, eliminating that swivel chair and improving metrics uh, you know, for the agency. So um, what this ultimately allows uh, the agency to do is to support a, a particular business or an individual um, through the life cycle of a case or through the life cycle of a, of a particular request on whatever channel works best for them. So um, we saw how uh, Julie started the request from the mobile, I mean, from the, the web experience, but she can easily switch to uh, you know, her mobile device as she's moving through her uh, daily life. So um, we see that the request uh, came in. Nope, it didn't come in. So let's go back to our, our request. So this is that permit request that has come in. Um, and it can be automatically assigned and routed directly to him based off of uh, a few business rules. So we actually use advanced work assignment where work can be routed based on availability, capacity, or skill, as well as things like agent affinity. So really getting that stakeholder in front of the best person to help. And once I you know, dive into this particular request, the, the context of the, of the government workspace really shifts to help John service Julie's request. And the first thing that John sees is a guided process that actually walks him through the necessary steps to complete the request. And everyone knows that it's very rare for cross-functional processes to be 100% um, automated. Quite often, processes require a mix of automation and human interaction. So playbooks, as Brittany mentioned earlier, really allow agents to uh, interact with business workflows in real time. So they empower the agency to configure those cross enterprise workflows and create that unified process. Um, and as he continues and completes part of this process, you know, part any step in the process, the playbook is automatically gonna, gonna advance forward or gonna advance to the next step that he needs to complete or maybe automation that needs to kick in. It's really this consistency and process that everyone can follow, regardless of tenure in the in the agency or organization or any particular knowledge level. Now, for John, remember he's really new still. He may not have all the answers. So we have um, you know, agent assist capabilities, which are gonna allow him to uh, allow you to surface relevant information to help him resolve the uh, resolve the, the request. So this could be knowledge base or knowledge articles that are designed for him to to uh, support the request. It could be knowledge articles that are that he can send to Julie to help her uh, better understand the process. Uh, this also could be, you know, similar requests. So maybe uh, he wants to understand if Boxio or someone from Boxio has submitted the same the same type of work so that they're not duplicating work. They can bucket those all into the same spot. Also too, if we had uploaded any uh, attachments, they would appear here. 
And then lastly, we've got this uh, activity stream. So the activity stream is really the full audit trail of anything that happens as part of a part of this request. So if I'm working with someone else and they happen to finish up a part of the a part of that that playbook, um, all of that information is kept in the activity stream. So no one, no matter who comes behind me, they will see you know what has changed and when. Now, we're going to fast forward in time a few days, and we're going to say that you know Julie uh, has some additional questions. So for her, first off, let me kind of clean up this interface just a hair, and we're going to go back to Julie, and um, she has been able to keep up with the process the entire time. She's received several communications regarding the status. But she does happen to have uh, some additional questions. And um, unfortunately today, she's really moving between office locations, right? So this is where she can jump on her mobile device, come back to the portal, um, and then see if she can get her question answered pretty quickly. Uh, so one of the things that she can see is that she's got access to a virtual agent where she can you know, you know um, try to get her question resolved, but her question is just really kind of quick. So uh, maybe she just wants to contact a live agent. So we can directly uh, get her in front of an agent to help her. And so if we now jump back to John Jason, we'll see that uh, her her recent uh, chat request has come in. And uh, now while John has been servicing her request, he is also monitoring chats for, for other you know types of work. And so he accepts this chat coming in from Julie. And this is where she can then ask her question and say, um, I would like a status of my recent request. And so now she's able to communicate directly with John on that, on that particular subject. Um, now, chatting is time consuming in a lot of instances. So what we're able to do is provide him a list of um, response templates so that he can um, uh, communicate back and forth with her very quickly. So uh, he finds the one where he would just cannot put you on hold for a minute so that I can take a look at this issue a little bit further. So from here, uh, he has complete view of, of this business and we call this our business 360. And this is gonna give him insight into everything that is going on with this business in relation to the agency, the, uh, the cases that have come in, uh, the priority of those cases, if they've received any services, uh, those will be listed. And other interactions, so uh, chat interactions, SMS, if that's a, a channel that's supported, phone calls, so on and so forth. And this is configurable. So if there's data or or information about, a, about an agency, I'm sorry, about a business uh, that's in another system, uh, using our uh, deep automation capabilities and integration capabilities, we can uh, dip into those systems as needed and pull that information out just in time. So he sees he's got uh, the recent request around permits. Um, he, he does understand he doesn't have all the answers and he can't seem to answer this one particular one. That's okay. Uh, he can collaborate with his teammates and start a, start a quick chat with uh, several of his coworkers. In this instance, he needs help. And I should spell that right. And um, he'll start that discussion with uh, with a couple of his coworkers. Uh, it turns out Alan is one of those uh, uh, his coworkers that could potentially answer the question for him, or or, or for Julie. And so it's at this point where uh, he can either transfer directly to him if he's in a queue or if he's uh, if he's online, or if there's a particular queue uh, that that several people are monitoring, we can transfer those off to. Now. Let's uh, let's back up a second. We're gonna wrap up here for John. And so what he saw was a personalized dashboard, a single interface to service requests regardless of channels, and he's agency agent guidance. So he's able to, to quickly resolve uh, requests as they come in. So this lack of swivel chair really drives down cost and effort. So really allows him to focus on, the, on that, um, that stakeholder engagement. And this affects things like agent onboarding and really closes the gap in knowledge between, between those analysts. Okay, now we're gonna switch hats one more time and we're going to go to Bernard. Remember Bernard Ludwig uh, is our agency director and in his role, he really needs to understand, 
let me start on this screen. He really needs to understand how his stakeholders are going to be managed, satisfaction, you know, in, of services provided, and really proactively understand where he can make adjustments to, you know, better ex execute against the mission. And so to do this, Bernard really relies on real-time dashboards. And uh, he has a view across all of his teams and departments. And with ServiceNow being that system of action, this is actually real-time business insight. So we're not having to ship the data off platform to potentially produce stale metrics. And of course, all of these dashboards are configurable. So uh, Bernard can, can quickly configure any new metrics or KPIs uh, that he wants to surface all using our no-code capabilities. Now, if Bernard sees an issue, so he's looking at a some time series uh, data, and this is powered by our uh, analytics hub, which is our machine learning capability that really, you know, surfaces, you know, a lot of the, you know, potential uh, problems in a process or, you know, in, in, in work being provided. So he sees that there's a dip in performance here in this particular time. He doesn't exactly know what's causing it, but he can drill into this. So every one of these components on that dashboard is driven by real data. So he can easily get access to those records in there. So from here, uh, he can show his trend line. He can turn that on and off. He can see at this point, there's a little bit of an uptick, but what about future? This is where forecasting capabilities using our machine learning. So based off of past performance and past uh, interactions, what can my potential future look like if it keeps on its current trajectory? And of course, he can al always show the records that are you know, driving this, but he does see that this is an issue. So what would be, what would be great is if he can take an x-ray of this process to really understand why things are the way they are. So um, he's got a capability, you know, that he uses a lot. It's called process optimization. And really, this is our in-platform process mining capability. And it, again, this is largely a data mining task. And in general, um, it's going to be a very time-consuming time and very complex process, usually done off-platform. So a lot of times any insights that are gained could be stale and not actionable. But this is where it being in platform helps out a great deal. So from here, um, what I'm able to do is take that x-ray of my process. I can see all of the pathways down the mountain people take to get work done in the system. And that can really be from any number of reasons. It could be that um, you might be dealing with a very experienced uh, analyst who knows the way around the organization and the process, so they might be skipping steps. You know, more importantly, you might see, you know, somewhere you, where you've got processes that are stuck in a loop. So maybe, uh, you know, diving into those is helpful. You know, we can also see where we've got some trends where certain records are taking way too long. Like I've got this set of records that are taking two weeks and two days. What does that pathway look like? What pro, what what stages and steps are they going through? Uh, and again, all of this is driven by um, you know real data in the platform, so you can better understand the, the the information that's driving it. The great thing about this is I can run this over and over. So this is a snapshot, but what happens if I uh, take the snapshot two weeks from now or a month from now? I I can compare those outputs to see where those deltas could be. Now, one of the other great capabilities is uh, being able to surface, you know, potential uh, opportunities for uh, improvement. So, um, you know, using our machine learning capabilities, we're able to analyze the data and come up with areas where you can potentially improve your process going forward. So, again, we're going to let's wrap up for Bernard for a second. So for Bernard, he's got real time business insights at his fingertips with a lot, all with drill down capability. He can customize those reports to meet his needs without any, without writing any code. And if he sees a, a process potentially slip, he actually has the confidence that he can get to the root cause. Now we have covered a lot in today's demo, but just to recap some of the things that we, that we did see, um, we saw a modern personalized experience. We saw this for both the customer, I mean, for that, that customer persona, which is gonna be the, you know, Julie, that business could be agency, could be a taxpayer, so on and so forth. And also the employee, because customer experience and employee experience are just as important. 
And we saw how we can or orchestrate work across silos. So we saw how John was able to, you know, orchestrate and track work across the different teams and systems and how he's able to collaborate with his other work, uh, work colleagues when certain questions arrived. And then lastly, uh, we saw real-time business insights. And so this is how Bernard, you know, gained the insight he needed to be effective and uh, run the business and support the mission. So Brittany, I'm gonna stop there and see if there were any questions that came up. Yeah, there was one question I figured we could answer live. Um, someone asked if the configurable workspace interface that you are demoing today is available for any other ServiceNow modules or is it specific to PSDS, um, the configurable workspace specifically? Yeah, configurable workspace is available on several, um, you know, solutions. One, you know, customer service, you know, utilizes that. Field service utilizes that. Um, we also have the, the ability to um, to create tailored workspaces for other other things using our, uh, you know, low code capabilities. So, but the configurable workspace is an out of the box out of the box capability. And then there was another question in the chat on, can you explain agency to agency and demonstrate? So in this in this um, demo environment, I don't have a specific agency use case uh, mm -hmm. to, to demo. However, um, there's a lot of times when agencies, um, like a great example would be like the Office of Inspector General. This is just a general use case where they support other departments in the in the agency they might you know they take requests from interagency but also externally as well um, you'll you have a lot of uh, use cases where agencies support um, businesses and, and customers you know or those I'm sorry the constituents on behalf of another agency I know those are kind of high level but you know I think if we take that offline we can dig into some specific you know, specific use cases. All right. Well, I think that's it for me. Uh, so for now, Brittany, I can hand it back to yep. you. So thank you so much for that solutions demonstration, Jimmy. Um, I hope that I was able to give you all a quick example of the platform in action. Uh, but there may be some folks still asking, you know, how does PSDS fit within my agency? Um, and today we'll talk through some use cases and customer stories uh, to hopefully uh, answer some of those questions as well. So many of our customers know us well for modernizing and improving IT services. There are even some questions in the chat around, um, you know, how this can be utilized for IT services as well. So PSDS allows your agency to modernize government service delivery within IT and beyond. Use, case, use cases can range from your day-to-day -day operations like facilities requests to shared services for your bureaus and sub-agencies to interacting and helping your vendors in, um, in procurement or even a mission-based complex grants management system. So all because of the power of the platform, you can run multiple of these services and use cases in parallel, saving you cost, time, and technical debt. So today I'd like to walk you through two specific examples of mission-built solutions on ServiceNow. The US Army was facing many challenges with the level of service they were providing to soldiers and their families relating to maintenance requests for their barracks and housing. The manual process that soldiers had to take for maintenance services created a lack of transparency and a poor soldier experience and living conditions. ServiceNow partnered with the Army to create a centralized system and portal experience, which allowed them to eliminate 10% of their case backlog automatically through the app, handle over uh, 1 million cases within the first two years from soldiers, and had 12 years of projected man hour optimization within the first year live only at one of their installations. So ultimately creating a better and safer experience for Army soldiers using the platform. Another example is U.S. Fish and Wildlife. They were challenged with many paper-based and manual processes that slowed down their mission of delivering over 350 types of permits to businesses and citizens. So through using ServiceNow, they're now able to digitalize to comply with IDEA Act mandate, create one end-to-end -end platform that extends through application, processing, and delivery of over 200,000 permits to date through the system. 
So although those were just two examples, when we look across our customer base, the benefits of implementing the ServiceNow solutions are impressive. We can help government agencies across federal, state, and local all overcome their own unique challenges to accelerate their delivery of services and improve customer experience. So with that, we'd like to conclude today's presentation. Um, I'm not sure if there are any more Q&As coming through the, through the chat um, to see if we can answer any lingering questions. Um, but like Jimmy said, if you'd like to learn more or have any specific use cases you'd like to discuss offline, uh, we've included our contact information here, um, and you can also scan this QR code to download the PSDS data sheet to learn more. So I'll pause and see if there are any questions, um, Jimmy or Heather, that have come in that we can maybe address for the last few minutes of today's call. Yes, yeah, so there's a couple that have come in. I've been answering. Um, you know, there's uh, someone that's asking how can they access, uh, get access to public sector digital services for a per personal developer instance. So the way that you can do that, so you can test this out on on any uh, personal developer instance or sub production instance. You know, but it's accessible through the store. The ServiceNow store, so store.servicenow.com, and uh, just and you can just search quickly search on public sector digital services to request the um, you know the the install for your for your instance. And I think that's uh, there's one other question that's come in. Uh, if we have ITSM on our instance, is PSDF, uh, PSDS available in that instance we currently have running? And that answer is. Uh, yes, it is. And then one other question's come in. Is there any out of the box feature lists? Um, uh, and what is the minimum release? So uh, the, I'll quickly answer that. Yes, there is an out of the box feature list and you can find that. Uh, we'll have to some, send that along with some follow up. Um, and public sector digital services, I think has a minimum install of San Diego. I need to I need to check on that, but I think that's I think that's it. Um, there is there is some confusion around FedRAMP and uh, uh, PDI uh, and software for a PDI. Public sector digital services, while it is um, uh, FedRAMP approved, it's also available for non FedRAMP use cases. So meaning that they can be it can be tested on a personal developer instance. And for the list of specific capabilities uh, within PSDS, um, you can scan this QR code to download the data sheet, which goes into a little bit more detail. It doesn't lay out everything, but we can see if we can include uh, some more specifics in the follow-up that Kerasoft will send for you all. Um, and for those of you on the line that are from our partner community, we do have another upcoming webinar on March 9th around building applications for federal agencies using the extension framework from public sector digital services. Uh, so you can scan this QR code here to register for that to get a little bit more hands on depth, uh, hands on um, in depth look at building out uh, specific case types and applications on PSDS as well. And lastly, for those of you who aren't aware of it yet, we have our ServiceNow Federal Forum coming up on March 13th. We'd love for you all to join us in Washington, D.C., in person at the Marriott Marquis, uh, where we'll have over 1,000 plus federal leaders as well as industry join to discuss new technologies, trends, and overall uh, digital transformation for the federal government. So uh, with that, I think that concludes today's presentation. Uh, we'll again, send all of this information and follow up with the recording. Um, so Heather, I'll pass it over to you to wrap things up. Great. Thank you, Brittany. Um, at this time, I'd just like to thank all of our participants as well as our speakers for being with us today. We hope the information you received during this webinar has been helpful.